You're listening to Athleisure Kitchen, where you'll get the inside scoop with those in the culinary world from celebrity chefs, food personalities, restaurateurs, and more. I'm your host, Kimmy Smith of Athleisure Mag, so set an extra plate as we chat all things culinary. On today's episode of Athleisure Kitchen, we sit down with Richard Grousman, founder of CCAP, Careers Through Culinary Arts Program, which trains students to have careers in the culinary industry. We talk about how he trained at the Le Cordon Bleu, how he trained others to become proficient in cooking, which ultimately led to his focus with hands-on education. We also talk about how the organization that he founded just celebrated their 30th anniversary, as well as how people such as Chef Marcus Samuelson are committed to the growth of this institution. So it's a big honor to be able to talk to you about the program. And I was just at your event uh, the other night for the 30th anniversary. That was a wonderful event. I mean, we've had 20 or 21 events. And that was an unusual one. Mm -hmm. um, two years ago, um, Jose Andres was our honoree. And that was unique in its style. Mm -hmm. because the room was filled with um, appreciation for what he's done philanthropically Absolutely. around the world. Mm -hmm. And our benefit this this year, there was I felt love and warmth and uh, for for the program from the guests. Mm -hmm. They were coming up with appreciation uh, when the, my daughter's little video ran mm -hmm. with the alumni expressing themselves. And after that video, there were alumni that were in the room, mm -hmm. that I've known for years, mm -hmm. that uh, I know what the program has done for them, but they had never expressed it to me. Aww. And they came up to me sort of empowered by what they had seen mm -hmm. it just opened up to me and it was just so heartwarming wow yeah. Well, you have had a phenomenal background. So prior to launching the Careers Through Culinary Arts program, can you talk about your background in terms of what you were doing prior to launching this? Sure. I had uh, uh, been the representative of the Cordon Bleu in Paris mm -hmm. for 15 years. I would originally gone to, to Paris to study cooking, to become a chef, mm -hmm. uh, hopefully in a small um, mountain uh, restaurant <laughs> mm -hmm. that I love to ski. To say, uh, nice. <laughs> so I was going to have skiing and cooking in my life. But I found while I was in Paris that I was too slow mm. um, to become a chef. And I was single-minded. I wasn't multitasker. Mm -hmm. um, and in the process, I taught myself skills that I saw the chef mm -hmm. and I realized that I could teach others wow so I told that of the school mm -hmm. uh, that instead of being a chef of a restaurant mm -hmm. I wanted to teach and timing is everything yeah and when I came back from a ski trip mm -hmm. when I was almost finished with the, the program she asked me if I would go to uh, Cleveland to teach a course for her because wow vice president of the department store of the Higby Company mm -hmm. and asked her to send a chef and she couldn't wow. send her chef who didn't speak English. And yep. She knew I was interested in teaching and the chef thought mm -hmm. it was very good. That started 15 years of teaching. Wow. French cooking around the country and Canada. And um, I never thought I wanted to do anything else. It was so um, gratifying mm -hmm. to, to teach and have students, men, women come up and tell me uh, their wife loved them more because of the tart tat tat mm -hmm. and, or their kids ate carrots for the first time. Wow. Um, but then I left the school, mm -hmm. wrote a cookbook, and while I was uh, traveling around the country promoting the book, mm -hmm. um, the vision of what America ate really hit me. Yeah. And it was, 
fried chicken, hamburgers, and pizza. Mm -hmm. And I thought that I could perhaps expand that talent. And in thinking about how best to do it, mm -hmm. the answer was you have to get into schools. You have to get in while the children are young, broaden their palate, broaden mm -hmm. their mind. Because if they leave school, I found out the average uh, adult, you know, if they didn't like something, they didn't try it. They didn't try it. Right? Mm -hmm. So I wanted to start in elementary school. I wanted to teach uh, sensory evaluation. Mm -hmm. and nothing better to do that than food yep. because you use all your senses. Mm -hmm. um, once you start doing that, you can teach nutrition. Then in middle school, I thought you could use foods from around the world to teach mm. geography, history, social studies. Yeah. And in high school, if you had a student with a palate and a passion, it'd be easy to train them for the industry. Yeah. But I had a book that I thought was readable at the high school level. Mm -hmm. I knew that home economics was in terrible shape. And I thought that by teaching the teachers some of the recipes in my book, to expose their students mm -hmm. to before they left high school, that was wow. My, that was my goal mm -hmm. before I went into the first classroom. Right. I went to the board of ed. They liked the idea. Uh, they said we don't have any money. Uh, and I said, can I go into one of your classes? And they said certainly. And I went into a class. And that day, I saw half the class making bread. And the other half were uh, Haitian students mm -hmm. that had recently arrived learning English in that mm. Wow. And I went around the classroom and I opened drawers and cabinets and they were empty. Mm. So I knew what the school system said, they didn't have any money. I asked the teacher, I said, uh, you know, I've been teaching French cooking for the last 15 years. Uh, if there's something I could do for you, what would mm -hmm. it be? And he laughed at me. <laughs> and I said, why? He said, I spent my own money to buy the flour today for the bread. Wow. So I knew Yep. they needed a lot of help. Mm -hmm. So that day I went home and I called up many of the manufacturers that I had been dealing with for 15 years. Mm -hmm. and said, you know, I want to help the schools. Can you help me? And they said, yes. Mm. So they donated products. Lots wow. of pans, knives, mm -hmm. spices, all sorts of things. Wow. And um, I then went into the schools to give a demonstration. Oh, before I did that, I brought the teachers together mm. and I taught them in the morning and then I watched them cook in the afternoon. Wow. And that showed me the level of proficiency of the teachers. Mm -hmm. uh, a few of them were quite competent, wow. but the majority of them mm -hmm. were not. And so I went to the French Culinary Institute, which is now ICC, International mm -hmm. Culinary. And I um, asked them if they would provide a training program for the teachers, mm -hmm. which they did. Yeah. Then I went into the classroom. Mm -hmm started to demonstrate for the students and when I saw facing me in the students some of them sleeping mm -hmm. uh, if they had, had food phones in that yeah. day they yeah they were like <laughs> um, and yet there were a couple of people bright eyed mm -hmm. attentive watching me and I watched them cook yeah and a few of them were very excited and would come up with their tart or Whenever I was teaching them and say, yeah, how do you like this, mister? How do you like this? And I said, oh, it's very good. And, uh, and I'd find out how, afterwards, how their parents liked it. Mm -hmm. They liked it. And I said, what are you going to do when you graduate? Don't know. And that's when I found out that the students that were in these classes were the students that the school system had failed. Mm -hmm. Most of them were D's and F's at best. Yeah. And, um, no preparation for college, no preparation for um, a career. And I said, do you ever think of cooking? Yeah. And they said, uh, no, can I? And I went to dinner that night in a small French restaurant on Lexington Avenue. And I asked the owner about 
jobs for high school graduates. Mm-hmm. What's the op- opportunity? And he laughed at me. Yeah. And I said, why? He said, look at my kitchen. I'm importing labor from South America mm-hmm. and Asia. I much prefer to have a New York yeah. that speaks English. Mm-hmm. I said, what do you need? I need to show up on time. I said, what else? Shows up on time, I'll teach him. I said, what about knife skills? Oh, if he has knife skills, I don't have to start him on the dishwasher. So that was the beginning wow. of CCAM. Now, within the next three years, summertime, I sent a student out. Chef said, yeah, he shows up on time, but you know, when he gets through with what I asked him to do, he goes out and has a smoke, mm-hmm. sits down, he's got to come to me and say, what's next, Chef? Yeah. You know, he's got to be eager to work. Mm-hmm. So I built that into it. Yeah. Shows up on time. What's next, Chef? What's next, Chef? Very eager, but he's not thinking. Yeah. He, he's got to be inquisitive. He's got to ask me why I'm using this onion instead of this one. This one he's got to want to learn. Yeah. So I built that into the program. Wow. Third year, we were in Chicago. Uh, I always went to the competitions. Mm-hmm. The competitions, I would have chefs from the industry come as judges, mm-hmm. and I'd take them out to dinner. Mm-hmm. And that night, I took one of the judges out with the director from the high school mm-hmm. uh, program, and uh, Martha said to Richard, uh, why don't you take our kids? You used to take them in the summer. Mm-hmm. And Richard said, are you teaching them the wrong things, Martha? And she says, what's that? So, well, I had a boy last summer, a stock pot spilled, and I asked him to get a mop mm-hmm. to clean it up, and he turned to me and he says, I don't do floors. Oh. And Martha said, he shouldn't have to. And that's when I knew the disconnect between mm-hmm. school and the industry. Yeah. And the next day I was handing out scholarships and I was saying, you know, one of the biggest complaints of the industry is a complaint of attitude. People are coming out of CIA, Johnson and Wales, they don't want to peel carrots, mm-hmm. they don't want to chop onions. They just want to be a chef. Yeah. And uh, I said, some of you told me you want to be executive chefs, you want to own your own restaurant, a few of you want a chain of restaurants. Yeah. I said, if you have your own restaurant and the dishwasher doesn't show up, you're washing dishes. Mm-hmm. If the janitor doesn't show up, you're cleaning toilets. Yep. I said, if you don't know how to clean toilets or wash dishes, I want you to go home tonight and she will to show you how Because <laughs> I want you to be prepared yeah. to do whatever's necessary. Mm-hmm. Well, I was shocked that a board member, a school board member, a minister, a grandparent, a parent, a teacher, all came up to me after the breakfast, after I handed out scholarships thanking me for talking to the kids the way I did. And I said, what's that? He's, they said, well, you told them what life is all about. Yeah. And I said, well, why aren't you? And they said, we're afraid to. Wow. And, and I, I didn't know what they were afraid of, so I investigated. Mm-hmm. And because the dropout rate, especially in Chicago and D.C. Uh, at that time, was so high, mm-hmm. Parents and administrators were saying to their kids, you stay in high school and you won't have to do what I did. And the administration was saying, and you'll get paid more. Right. Right? And so they were coming out, students were coming out, and they're still doing this in Chicago. I heard it uh, just last week, that they're telling the student and expecting mm-hmm. students coming out of their culinary programs to get managerial jobs and instead of entry level jobs. Right. And so students come out feeling I'm not gonna take minimum wage. Yeah. You know, so I get more. Wow. And I'm not gonna, you know, wash dishes or chop vegetables. I wanna be a manager. So if you if you aren't prepared to enter the industry, mm-hmm. you never go anywhere. Absolutely. So that's the essence of what we mm-hmm. do. We 
we work with the teachers to train them in the, the few skills necessary to get started. Mm-hmm. Where the school system wants their teachers to teach A to Z, uh, lobster, steak, mm-hmm. fish, uh, eggs, and salad, everything. Mm-hmm. They only need to know how to chop, dice, slice, yeah. keep things clean, mm-hmm. neat, be safe yeah. at the workplace, um, show up on time, mm-hmm. want to work, want to yeah. <laughs> and, and have uh, basic knowledge of, of uh, ingredients and equipment. Mm-hmm. So we try to get the teachers focused on that. Mm-hmm. When this and they have the students for anyways from one to three years. Wow! So, yeah. So they can work on that mm-hmm. coming to school. Exactly. Uh, wearing your apron, mm-hmm. washing your hands. Yeah. Right? Which takes time for them to learn. <laughs> yeah. And um, when you, when we see them. We get them either into our competitions mm-hmm. or into our job training for summer jobs, mm-hmm. job shadows, wow. to expose them to the industry. We have a student that is already eager and interested and inquisitive. Yeah. So, wow. When they leave us and go into the industry, the industry is saying, wow, mm-hmm. send us more. Absolutely. And that is when Marcus uh, came in and I encouraged him to take on the co-chairmanship mm-hmm. of the uh, program of the organization his view one was to expand on yeah. what I had started and wants to reach more students train more students mm-hmm. because the industry is in need of more yeah so that's that's where we are now we're, we're wow the organization is, is trying to figure out how to expand mm-hmm. on what we already do and we do well so about how many students would you say are currently in this program well, it, it, it depends on how you look at it. Mm-hmm. i look at it as we have uh, about 200 teachers each teacher has probably 50 students. Mm-hmm. So what do we have there? 10,000 yeah. students. Wow. So if there are 10,000, I think the numbers that the organization uses is 17,000. Mm-hmm. But that may be for the four years where I'm thinking of yeah. the, the upper level. So those are... 10,000 students that the teachers have, and teachers range from poor Mm -hmm. to excellent. Yeah. So the effect that they have on their students varies, Mm -hmm. but they all have an effect on on their students. So out of that, we see the students that express interest in going beyond the classroom, Mm -hmm. whether it be shadows, whether it be in summer internships, whether job training, whether it's college advice, mm-hmm. whether it's our competitions. Wow. So you go from 10,000 down to a couple of thousand, mm-hmm. down to several hundred um, that get scholarships. Mm-hmm. Wow. Um, but there are many hundreds that go into the industry for summer jobs. Yeah. So it's on, yeah. it's on the level of interest focus hmm. uh, but we've 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 worked with I think uh, over 300,000 students in the 30 years uh, wow. and probably have given 60 million dollars in scholarships Wow and untold number of jobs yeah and then we follow those students Mm-hmm. If they stay in touch with us mm-hmm. and they have a problem, they want to change jobs, they, they haven't had a raise in three years, mm-hmm. what do I do? Yep. Uh, I want to go to Spain, I want to learn something. 
all those things we have ability to help them. Wow. Yeah. So that's phenomenal. And how do you assess like which high schools you go into? Well, initially I um, had three areas that I was interested in: mm-hmm. be in New York, Chicago, and San Francisco. Mm. So I got into I started in New York. Yeah. Uh, and then people heard about what we were doing. I was on first on NBC um, the first time about our program. The next night, I got a call from Washington D.C. head of home economics. Mm-hmm. Can we get your program down here. I said, "How many wow. schools do you have?" Mm-hmm. And I was looking to go into a community with at least fourteen, fifteen schools, mm-hmm. and because to, for the manufacturers to give yep. equipment. And mm-hmm. One school didn't, yeah. didn't make it. So I, I went to uh, D.C. next, and I heard from a teacher in Arizona and one in uh, Norfolk, Virginia. Wow. They've been at a teacher's conference. Mm-hmm. They heard about the program. Can they have it? Wow. How many schools do you have? When it was sufficient, I went and taught the teachers, mm-hmm. brought chefs in the local area wow. into the program. I started the program. Mm-hmm. It was very easy. Within five years, I had seven programs. Wow. Very hard to maintain and grow the program. Right. Because when I put it all together, it worked. Mm-hmm. But to keep it going, mm-hmm. I needed volunteers, and eventually the volunteers needed to be paid. Yep. And then we needed a staff, mm-hmm. and we needed an office, and Wow, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? So the numbers, you know, that we affect did year after year didn't change much. The number of scholarships grew. Mm-hmm. Uh, but um, the degree at which we worked with the students mm-hmm. improved. Yeah. The, the level of services that we gave them. Mm-hmm. Initially, I thought if I gave a student a scholarship to go to the Culinary Institute, mm-hmm. change their lives. Yeah. In some cases, it didn't change it for the better mm. because I took a student out of their community, yep. threw them into a new community. Mm-hmm. They had no way to adjust, to yeah. understand. They didn't know how to get help with their schoolwork. Mm-hmm. Their grades dropped and they lost their scholarship. Yeah. So then I had to find ways to uh, mitigate that. Yeah. And I had students going to community college before going off to the CIA. Wow. So that wow. Their, their grades, they, their reading and math was at a level that they could mm-hmm. do, do the work easily. Absolutely. Uh, I would have people on campus because maybe they were the only black student mm-hmm. that uh, walked into on the campus. Yeah. So once I had several of our students, I got them to form a club mm-hmm. to greet the others right. and to work with the campus mm-hmm. in ways. Wow. So, so CCAP students got a name. Mm-hmm. You know, was they, they were proud to be CCAP mm-hmm. on campus. Um, so working, work, finding what the problem is and then finding a solution for it mm-hmm. was what yeah. my mind, how my mind worked. Mm-hmm. And the program has grown organically because of that. If wow. I saw a problem, I would address it, try to solve it, and mm-hmm. solving it, I found a way to move people over. So who are groups or organizations that you also partner with frequently? Well. There are a number of organizations that do similar work. Mm -hmm. Um, We're we're not actively working with them. I did, I worked with the American Culinary Federation for Mm -hmm. a number of years in the beginning because their chefs in the association needed credits Mm -hmm. for their to continue in the um, association, mm-hmm. and one of the ways they could get credit would be to volunteer and to, to, to go into the schools. Mm-hmm. So I took advantage of that, and their members.
libraries went into mm. the schools, they loved it, they became judges mm -hmm. and so forth. The organization itself, I uh, tried to work with and I became their school to work chairman. Wow. Uh, and was not able to get them to move mm -hmm. in the direction I saw necessary. Yeah. Um, so I haven't been active with the organization for 15 years. Uh, the National Restaurant Association mm -hmm. um, also wanted to work with us years ago, but it turned out they wanted us to work for them. Right. And uh, partnerships were not in there mm -hmm. in the way they saw it. They, yeah. they saw it their way and mm -hmm. wanted us to, to work with them. Um, and they do a lot of good. Mm -hmm. Their programs, uh, both the ACF and the NRA, have programs that affect schools and, and students. Um, but I don't see them working with the populations that we work with. Mm -hmm. um, many of them. They saw how effective our competitions were, so mm -hmm. they started going. Right. right? <laughs> and uh, when you when you offer um, na nationwide competitions, and you have affluent schools mm -hmm. and affluent affluent students mm -hmm. in that uh, in those areas, and they're competing against our students from poor schools, mm -hmm. poor backgrounds. Um, our students don't make it to the top. Mm. In our competitions, mm -hmm. yeah. they make it to the top and beyond. Wow. So we can focus on a certain population mm -hmm. to what I think is important work. Yeah. Uh, and I don't concern myself about the, mm -hmm. the whole country. Yeah. Uh, where, where they do. I love seeing the pride of the kids at the, the anniversary event and just seeing them like working side by side. I mean, you had so many phenomenal like celebrity chefs there and, and restaurants that I love eating at. I'm friends with a number of the people and seeing people have that chance and being in front of all of these people eating their food that, that had to be just to boost the confidence and that's a resume builder. Yeah, I, I learned very early when I was teaching mm -hmm. that the importance of teaching is to empower others. Mm -hmm. So I found ways to empower housewives to mm -hmm. talk to their butcher. <laughs> yeah. and, and all of a sudden, relationships were, <laughs> were starting. To right. Come back, oh, Mr. Rousen, what you told me about that leg of lamb, my butcher looks at me as a professional. Right. <laughs> Just, just a few words. Just a few words make right? you feel so much more comfortable. Right. Wow, yep. So that's the same thing that I did with CCAP by teaching the students certain techniques that once a professional chef saw them accomplished, mm -hmm. they were impressed beyond yeah. their capability. Mm -hmm. I mean, one example was uh, in a competition. Um, I had the executive chef from the Four Seasons mm -hmm. in New York as a judge, and she came up to me and she said, uh, Richard, that young man is really great. Yeah. Um, do you think I could get him to work for me? I said, give him your card. Oh my God. So, <laughs> That's we huge. Gave, we gave him a, a scholarship to go to the French culinary, and she hired him. And he would be calling me up every day saying, Mr. Cressman, I have to make a salad today. I don't know how to make a salad. What should I do? I said, in my book, there are three great salads, you know, make one of them. Mm -hmm. You know, and this went on for a couple of months. And then the chef called me up and said, Richard, I have to tell you that I have to let Damien go. I said, why? He said, well, we have a union house oh. and the other members are complaining that he's not Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. doing what uh, everybody else does. Mm -hmm. And that's because Damien, when I knew him in high school, mm -hmm. he was taking care of 
two younger siblings. His wow. uh, mother, I think, one parent had died, one was ill, mm-hmm. and he was working at uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken, mm-hmm. closing up at 2 o'clock at yep. night, mopping the floors. And his teacher had taught him the skills involved in our competition. Yeah. And he was spectacular at it. Mm. And that's why that chef mm-hmm. said, I want it. Yeah. So I empower these students wow. to impress the yeah. professionals mm-hmm. to get into their kitchen. Exactly. And except for him because of the union. Right. Every kitchen that our kids went into, even though they weren't up to the standards mm-hmm. that the chefs thought they were after seeing them. Yeah. They were capable of learning and being trained. Wow. So I got them in the kitchen. Yeah. Right? So that and that's was, the biggest hurdle. Right. <laughs> So that's a, those were the, the little secrets mm-hmm. that uh, I used to uh, focus on. Mm-hmm. Because you you want students to, you want teachers to be able to effectively teach their students mm-hmm. the skills. You can't ask them to do more than is realistically achievable. Yep. And that's the problem with our education. Yeah. They set goals and standards. Mm-hmm that aren't achievable because what happened before they got into the ninth grade, tenth yeah. grade, eleventh yep. grade yeah. wasn't achieved. Mm-hmm. So if you're reading at third grade level and you're in the ninth grade and you're mm-hmm. supposed to read at tenth grade yep. by the time you're out, kids drop out because they can't do it. Mm-hmm. Well, it's frustrating. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Wow. So, so unless you unless you go back down mm-hmm. and solve those problems at the time. Yeah. You, you're not going to reach there. You no. Know, they said, I, I said, first year I was doing this, I was asked to be on a council advisors for the Board of Ed. And I ran into a situation where a student, we, it was in junior year, we gave him a scholarship to the Natural Gourmet hmm. uh, School here in New York. And I followed up in the summer and I said, how is he doing? Mm-hmm. I said, Richard, that's very strange. You know, he the first class he was fantastic. I had him coming up. His high skills were so good. I had him demonstrate for the rest of the class. Wow. But he didn't show up the next day. And I wow. said, I said, what did you say to the class when you let them go? She said, I told them that uh, I wanted them to read chapters one through five. And we would work on that the next day. Mm-hmm. So I called his teacher and I said, do you know why he wouldn't have shown up? And I told him they demonstrated knife skills and was asked to read chapters one for three. Oh, that's it. Oh. I said, what do you mean that's it? He doesn't read. A junior in high school doesn't read. I said, how did he get to become a junior? Yeah. Oh, um, he maneuvers every time he has to to read he opts out he, right you know, he, wow so i sat at this council mm-hmm. that summer and i said how can you allow a student to get into a junior year and can't read mm-hmm. oh richard you don't understand the problems we have we have kids uh, with uh, umpty ump language problems uh, um, and we we have to move them on. We can't. I, I said, you can't. You can't. After third grade, if they don't read in third grade, yeah, you got to make sure they read before they go yeah. to fourth grade. Wow. And you can't do that. The age you got to keep them with their age and so. I said, you've got to put them in a place and teach them reading, 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 reading. Mm-hmm. reading. And they said, oh, we can't do that. We have to teach them math. Uh, we have to teach them history. We have. To, I said, you can't teach them anything. anything. <laughs> yeah. If they can't read. Right. right. And I don't know what the situation today is, <sighs> how many students That's heartbreaking. are dropping out because they can't read. I wow. Don't, I don't know. But that was back in 1990. And, um, you know, to me, that's the major problem. Mm-hmm. And you solve it. Yeah. And how do you solve it? 
you find all different ways to teach reading. Mm-hmm. You know, the Sesame Street. Yeah, right? I, I'm, my mind is literally just like, wow. Yeah, so, so education mm-hmm. is something I'm very interested in, I'm passionate about. I am frustrated Mm -hmm. uh, because I don't see, often don't see the imagination or creativity in solving problems. Mm -hmm. They identify problems and they identify solutions and then when that solution doesn't work, they find another solution. And when that, why don't those solutions work? Mm -hmm. Find out the root of the problem. Yeah. And, um, Hopefully, one of the one of the reasons that we I established competition mm-hmm. was that the teachers weren't teaching the skills necessary to get the jobs. Yeah, because their curriculum was so vast, mm-hmm. they couldn't repeat something. Mm. And you can't learn knife skills unless you repeat them. Exactly. You wow. can't learn um, how to make a sauce properly unless you repeat it. So mm-hmm. there are certain things you need in cooking. Mm-hmm. Yep. And so the teachers that ha- go through our competitions and tell me, oh, Richard, you know, thank you so much. And I never thought I could get uh, one of my kids to get a scholarship to Johnson and Wales. Yeah, which is huge. You know? And uh, you gave me the opportunity. I said, and then they said, but it was hard. I said, what was it mean it was hard? Oh, I had to work with them after school. And and I said, why don't you work with them during class? Mm-hmm. You know? And why don't you work with all your students, not just the one or two? Oh, I can't give knives to some of my students. And I can't do this to some of my students. They're not interested. So I take the ones that are interested mm-hmm. and I train them. So I'm, wow. I've been looking for years mm-hmm. for a way to get teachers to be able to focus on those skills. Yeah. Both hard skills and soft skills. Mm-hmm. Showing up. Yep. Right. <laughs> and, and the only way I could get them to do it was through the competition. So now I've been working on what I call CCAP approved. Okay. And it's a... It's an assessment. It's skills that uh, first I gave to the teachers. And mm-hmm. I said, these are the these are the skills that you should um, work on. Well, I found that the teachers would like to do that, but the administration doesn't let them. Oh wow! So we're working on New York now. We we've, we've uh, evaluated their uh, benchmarks. Mm-hmm. Uh, in doing that, we cut down the things that students need mm-hmm. to learn, and now they want us to do an assessment test. Mm-hmm. And if that goes through, then we'll have the piece that I've been visualizing for mm-hmm. 15 years, uh, which will be mandated to the teachers mm-hmm. as this is what you have to teach our kids. Yeah. Not this, mm-hmm. from A to Z, mm-hmm. but these few skills that will be meaningful for them in the industry. Wow. And if, if, if mm-hmm. I can pull that off in New York, then I could be Roll it out. Off. Yeah. Wow. And when I, when, when I look at the students that are in those classrooms now, mm-hmm. If the teacher say today, come on, we're we're, we're all chopping. Mm-hmm. We're gonna we're gonna see who's the fastest. Yeah. You know, and then, mm-hmm. you know, develop uh, like a sport. Absolutely. Right? And, mm-hmm. and get them uh, excited about it and uh, trying to perfect mm-hmm. their skills. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, Americans and and today's youth. Uh, if they don't get it right away, they're they, like frustrated. Right, yeah, they drop it. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you ever come, if you come to our competition, I would love to. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> it was it last weekend? But we do a dish that um, has turned potatoes, mm-hmm. and chefs would 
come to me and say, Rich, why are you teaching turned potatoes? Mm-hmm. We don't do that anymore. And if we use them mm-hmm. in a banquet, we get them from Mexico. Mm. And I said, I put it in there because the average teenager tries to do something, can't do it, quits. Mm-hmm. I said, if they can stick with it long enough to learn how to turn mm-hmm. a potato, there's nothing you can give them mm-hmm. that'll take more time yeah. and patience. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I'm not afraid of their quitting on you. Yeah. They'll, they'll yeah. work. So it was. it's a tool to achieve a certain... Uh, it's a vehicle mm-hmm. to achieve a certain end result. Wow. And that's to teach repetition, mm-hmm. you know, willingness to do this. I mean, teachers, I've been te- using the same recipes for competition for, well, we switched from, originally from salmon uh, and beurre blanc to poached chicken, hmm. uh, poached chicken to the sautéed chicken mm-hmm. that we use now. The dessert was always crepes, pastry cream, and chocolate sauce. Oh, it nice. still is. And the teachers would tell me, oh, Richard, can't we change the competition recipes? <laughs> I'm getting so sick of it. And I said, you can't. You can't get sick of it mm-hmm. because your students can't get sick of it. Exactly. If they're a chef mm-hmm. in a restaurant and they're making this chicken dish mm-hmm. on their menu, mm-hmm. they've got to make it good or better each time they make it. They mm-hmm. can't get tired of making it. They mm-hmm. have to find something in it that drives them on. Mm-hmm. I said, when all your students are making the chicken perfectly, mm-hmm. or the crepes perfectly, I'll think about changing <laughs> the dishes. And some years, they focus, the teachers focus on the crepes, and the crepes come out thin and beautiful, and, and I'm beginning to think about changing it. Mm-hmm. And the next year, they're thick. And, and you're like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so they, and the chef said, um, come to judge they see the the techniques mm-hmm. that the students have to learn to do these dishes and they appreciate it mm-hmm. they say you know Richard you're you're old time but it's good because they have, they're learning their their basics mm-hmm. and um, you know in time I won't be here and somebody else will and the skills may be changed and the industry is changing all the time yeah. And there may be skills that we should be teaching Mm -hmm. to help them go into fast casual to to other ends of the business. Mm -hmm. And I want to to know what those are. Mm -hmm. And if they're teachable at the high school level, we Mm -hmm. should do that. Right. Um, But basically, what we're doing, we're teaching them discipline, attention, focus, uh, sanitation, safety. Mm and you can't teach this overnight. Yeah. It's, it needs to become a habit and a routine. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Wow. And, and uh, not good, we're, we've been lucky. Mm-hmm. Our kids, when you, when you pick a student that has those basics, put them in the hand of a good chef mm-hmm. who is interested in mentoring. Mm-hmm. You, they go from dishwasher to uh, sous chef yeah very quickly mm-hmm. I just had a couple of chefs tell me that they have some of our uh, kids and the youngest female sous chef in their corporation they wow the uh, uh, sous chef you know so they they learn quickly mm-hmm. they, they they're not interested in looking at their watch and right mm-hmm. they say what's what, what can I do be, before I leave chef mm-hmm. something I can do for you wow so that attitude and interest is you know, golden. Wow. Well, clearly you've been a mentor to so many chefs and, and so many people coming through the program. Who have been like three of your mentors that have like really shaped what you've done over your you know years? Well, I, I think of two or three people come to mind. There are lots of different chefs that I respect. Mm-hmm. In the but... Uh, Jacques Pepin, mm-hmm. when I was a teacher, he was a teacher also. He was, wow. he was teaching around the country. We sort of were in the same cities at, at times, but never met each other <laughs> until maybe 10, 10 years later. Mm-hmm. Uh, but when I got 
to see him, him work and saw his books. Mm -hmm. He's one of the finest teachers mm. uh, I've ever met. Wow. And his, his ability to, to make things look easy mm -hmm. um, is something that I used, I learned, and I passed that on to mm -hmm. students. Um, Danielle Boulou mm -hmm. is a chef who um, is very dedicated to French cooking, but he's adapted uh, techniques to America, mm -hmm. America American uh, taste, but has kept a level of, mm -hmm. e of excellence that, um, in my mind, is very important. Mm -hmm. And he, He's a wonderful mentor, mm. and what he's done uh, with Mentor, a uh, non-profit mm -hmm. organization <clears throat> of, of chefs to help younger chefs, mm -hmm. uh, I commend him tremendously on that, mm. and uh, we work with him and, and Mentor on some of their projects. A number of our students have gotten scholarships through them. Um, Marcus, mm -hmm. uh, when I first met Marcus, uh, I saw potential as a role model for many of our students, mm -hmm. uh, and he has he has a way of personality to inspire mm -hmm. young people, um, and so I'm hopeful that as he gets more and more time mm -hmm. to focus yep. on this, uh, that will translate. Absolutely. I mean, I am on Facebook uh, till 2 o'clock at night. My <laughs> wife is so upset at me. still on Facebook. I said, yeah, I'm talking to a student I haven't talked yep. to in 20 years. Mm -hmm. you know? And um, I have a relationship um, where they talk to me as an equal. Wow. Um, I sort of try to advise them mm -hmm. you know, on a level that was, is meaningful to them. So they open up to mm -hmm. me. And, but I'm white, mm -hmm. and they may be Hispanic. Mm -hmm. And um, I can't, I, I know what they've gone through because I read their essays. Yeah. I, I hear about them difficult uh, childhood mm -hmm. they've had and the, and the way they've been mistreated in their lives. So I understand what they've gone through, but I don't understand right. exactly mm -hmm. what they've gone through. I can't, I can picture it, I can uh, see it many, many times mm -hmm. in different ways from every kid. I don't know if I could have gotten through mm -hmm. what they went through, mm -hmm. um, but for them it was life, yeah. and they uh, they survived life. Mm -hmm. And when I've been able to open a door or make an introduction or point them in the right direction, and it's been life changing to them, mm -hmm. it's been easy for me. Yeah. So they went. They've gone through the hard things, and I'm using things that are easy for me to do for them mm -hmm. and it changes that that's yeah. a great combination and wow it's a when i thought that i there was nothing else i could do in life but teach mm -hmm. get join me there mm -hmm. what i've been doing for the last 30 years is life changing yeah and that is really powerful mm -hmm. and i wish more people who when they get wealthy and retire, mm -hmm. would not retire from life, Right. Would, would use their expertise mm -hmm. and get back, find a way to get back, because mm -hmm. at all levels, whether it's in banking or stocks or football, mm -hmm. uh, mentorship can change lives. Absolutely.
We can't wait to sit with you again to share another great story with you at Athleisure Kitchen. Athleisure Kitchen is a part of Athleisure Studio, our multimedia podcast network, which is the division of Athleisure Media, and whose sister site is Athleisure Mag. Get the latest episode by listening, following, and leaving a review on Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Stitcher Premium, Himalaya, or your preferred podcast platform. Find out additional information by checking out the show notes. You can stay in the loop on who future guests are by visiting us at athleisurestudio.com backslash athleisure kitchen and on Instagram at athleisure kitchen and at athleisure studio. I'm your host, Kimmy Smith. Athleisure Kitchen is executive produced by Paul Farkas and myself and is mixed by the team at Athleisure Studio. We'll be back with another episode, so make sure that you set an extra plate for us.